2.15 a.m., 12 objects lay still beneath the steel bridge. A Russian supply convoy stretching more than five miles began to slow. Over 500 vehicles idled in line, engines rattling, lights flickering. They carried ammunition, fuel, and command gear for 2,000 troops. Ponsir S-1 air defense systems guarded the column's flanks. Each carried 57 E-6 missiles and twin 30mm autocannons. A Nebo-M radar swept the sky every three seconds like a heartbeat. The soldiers believed they were safe. The they never the saw what waited below the bridge. Twelve over. Ukrainian yeah, FPV drones forever. hung motionless, clamped by magnetic locks. Each carried a PG-7VL warhead, powerful enough to punch through reinforced concrete. No GPS, no signal, no pilot, just one encrypted wake-up command. 36 hours earlier, the enemy believed the route was secure, but a blown Russian truck tire had created the perfect choke point. The trap was ready. The operator just had to press one key. In a hidden Ukrainian bunker, a finger hovered over a keyboard. Green LEDs flickered to life under the bridge. Motors spun up with a low whine, merging into the hum of engines above. The drones hugged the concrete pillars, invisible to radar and sight. This strike wasn't meant to come from above. It would come from below. A defense analyst later said, they didn't just destroy a bridge, they broke a lifeline. The goal wasn't simply to collapse concrete, it was to cripple logistics. Twelve green lights blinked alive under the bridge. The drones dropped three feet, their rotors whirring to full speed. The low hum blended with tire friction and wind cutting through steel. Six drones banked toward the ammunition trucks. Four turned toward the fuel All tankers. The last two locked Roger, on to the command vehicles. In a Ponsir control cab, a Russian Commander, lieutenant the saw the radar distort. He switched from passive to ghosts. active tracking. Active a 57E6 missile fired, locking on to a phantom heat trace. It struck a Ukrainian decoy drone that had activated seconds earlier. The fireball lit the riverbank and threw shadows up the bridge. Panic spread instantly. Trucks braked, jackknifed, and collided. Radios erupted with orders, curses, and coordinates. Amid the chaos, the drones pulled back under the steel beams. Their onboard AI read the situation and shifted to evasive mode. At 40 miles out, an A-50 radar aircraft detected heat signals below the bridge. Its top-down feed sent coordinates to ground-based Tor M2 units. A 9M338 missile launched at over 1,800 miles per hour, streaking toward Drone 9. The drone deployed a fiber-optic tow decoy, a hundred feet of cable. At the end, an AL-50 pod amplified radar reflections, simulating a full-size target. The interceptor veered off and exploded mid-air, destroying only the decoy. Every radar operator within 50 miles looked up at the flash. For a moment, the bridge fell silent. Then came the final command from the Ukrainian bunker. Execute. Eleven drones surged upward, full throttle. They would not hide again. A defense analyst noted, Timing decided everything. They waited, then struck perfectly. Concrete split under the first ammunition truck.
Drone 1 pierced the bridge beam and detonated after a programmed delay. The blast hit with over 4,000 PSI, channeled downward in a tight cone. The shockwave bounced off the river like a mirrored hammer, twisting steel supports. Seven more explosions followed in less than two seconds, synchronized to overlap. A Ural truck carrying mortar shells plunged nose first into the crater below. Its impact triggered a chain of sympathetic detonations. Wooden crates of 122mm and 152mm shells ignited, spreading fire like a storm. Fuel poured across fractured asphalt, igniting into rivers of flame. Tankers exploded in sequence, one after another, sending columns of fire 70 feet high. A Pantsir launcher tried to fire blindly through smoke and chaos. Radio chatter broke down, command posts went silent. Within minutes, the air defense battery was consumed by fire. Steel twisted and groaned as the bridge's southern span gave way. Satellite images later showed a half-mile stretch of charred vehicles. Over 100 trucks destroyed or immobilized. Material losses in the hundreds of millions, but the real loss was operational. Without the bridge, frontline artillery would run out of shells within 72 hours. Without fuel, armored divisions couldn't move. The battle's tempo collapsed with the bridge. As one strategist summarized, speed, synchronization, and timing, that's what won this ambush. Dawn broke over smoke still rising from the river. Thick black clouds stretched Useless. south like a funeral static. shroud. Rear echelon units scrambled to contact command. Maps became meaningless. The primary supply bridge was gone. Over two million pounds of ammunition and fuel had been erased overnight. Frontline artillery slowed to a fraction of its rate. Armored vehicles, stranded without fuel, stood silent along the roadsides. Russian troops halted, awaiting impossible resupply. The alternate route was a 58-mile detour through contested terrain. Ukrainian HIMARS units had already targeted every choke point. M31A1 rockets rained down along the detour routes. The reroute turned into a shooting gallery. Convoys burned, resupply collapsed. One analyst put it bluntly, in modern war, kill the logistics and you kill the army. Morale cracked. Officers debated retreat and consolidation. Ukraine exploited the chaos, repositioning M77 howitzers and Nassam's units forward. No tanks, no aircraft, just patience and precision. What began under the bridge had now rippled through an entire front. The psychological blow was even greater than the physical one. Every commander now questioned whether any route was truly safe. By sunrise, the Nipro bridge was nothing but scorched steel. A 400-foot gap gaped where concrete once connected two banks. Overhead, Ukrainian reconnaissance drones circled, filming every inch. Below, burned trucks, ruptured fuel tanks, and smoke filled the air with gasoline haze. The footage streamed live to Kyiv, where analysts confirmed nine of eleven direct hits. Two drones lost, but the mission complete. The total cost under $1,000 in hardware. The damage, over $300 million in destroyed equipment. But the true victory wasn't in the numbers. 
it was in how the war itself had changed. No tanks, no jets, no artillery barrages, just a few propellers, an AI script, and perfect timing. The ambush redefined 21st century warfare. Power no longer came from size, but from silence and precision. Not the loudest weapon, but the one unseen. Not the missile, but the algorithm. Not the tank, but the code. War was shifting from thunder to data, from firepower to timing. A defense expert summed it up. The scariest weapon today is the one you never see coming. As fires still burned on the water, the southern front fell silent. No fuel, no ammo, no movement. Ukraine advanced while the enemy retreated. The next day's headlines called it the night the bridge fell. But for the military world, it marked something deeper. A new definition of ambush. A strike that didn't come from the sky, but from the shadows below. A victory not by force, but by intelligence and time.